So we're going to add in a new texture resource here. We'll just say public shared menu one as texture 2D. Then we have to load the resource right here. Say menu one equals globals dot content dot load and the type is of texture 2D and then we have to provide the path parameter here to the asset and we put that in our graphics folder as menu 1 just double check here and there it is so that should now be available to our screen though it's not drawing it we will want to go back to our um, title screen that we're working on. Did I close that out? I must have. Open that back up. Go ahead and save your project. So back to our draw sub. We can now select textures, our global class, dot menu one and we have to decide where we want this menu segment to draw so we are going to say new rectangle for the destination and I want it to pretty much draw across the screen so let's look at our our graphic here real quick um, I don't want to draw the entire thing so my source rectangle is going to be just a sliver of this and then we're we're going to draw that across the screen we really don't need that many pixels out of this since it's the same all the way across um, mainly we need all the way from the top to the bottom to create the full gradient and then just a sliver going from left to right uh, but we don't need any of this so in our source we'll be cropping that out let's go ahead and back to the whoops what am I doing I'll close that out <clears throat> so back to my title screen here I want that to to be drawn all the way across our title screen uh, so what I'm going to do is say zero zero that's the top left corner and I want it to be the same size as my screen so I'm going to say globals dot <coughs> game size dot x globals dot game size dot y <clears throat> so now we will set up our source rectangle we'll say new rectangle and we are going to grab the top leftmost pixel of our menu graphic so again zero zero is going to be the source and we want um, all the way from the top to the bottom I'm only going to go in one pixel from the right that's our width so we're just going to grab a one pixel sliver but we want it to be the full length of the picture which is going to be 64 pixels and finally we have to specify a color for our background. I've kind of chosen that um, sort of brownish color that we that you've seen in the graphics. Uh, you're welcome to use whatever color scheme you would like for your game. So I'm just going to say I want a new color and I'm going to specify the RGB values for that. And we can cap that off. And that part is, should be good. I'm going to go ahead and save. So if we did this right, our screen should now have essentially just a brownish gradient filled background. Um, but we won't be able to actually see that yet until we've told it to use this screen uh, from our previous tutorials we were using the test screen uh, and also some 
sort of drawings, uh, you know, that were being launched from the game uh, base here. So, <coughs> excuse me, let's go ahead and open the game base, game1.vb. And first thing we want to do is tell it to stop using our test screen as the default screen. So if you go down to the load content sub in there, uh, instead of adding the screen test screen, let's add a title screen. Okay, if it recognizes it, and it should be in blue there. And also, let's go ahead and clean up some of the trash that we have down here. Uh, all these texture tests and things that we were doing before, we really don't want those. Um, and also the sprite fonts we were testing. Like I said in the last video, uh, we want pretty much everything that's rendered from this point on to be handled by our uh, screen manager's drawing routine. So it'll all draw in the proper order. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save again. We should be able to test our screen now if we want to see that gradient. So let's go ahead and uh, try debugging here. We'll hit our start and take a look. Hey, look at that. It's uh, looking pretty good. So as you can see, we have a nice smooth gradient that is created by that uh, texture being drawn across the screen. It's only a sliver of it going over one pixel and then being duplicated all the way across or stretched. Um, <clears throat> So we're drawing to this top left corner and stretching it across in the height and width of the game screen. So now we can close that out and get some uh, text on the screen. We'll go ahead and go back to our uh, title screen. So let's do a little more drawing here. I'm going to drop down a line. Now to keep this simple, I'm going to be going for kind of a cheesy text overlay uh, effect by duplicating some text and just kind of offsetting it a couple pixels. Um, going to call my globals dot sprite batch dot draw string this time, and we're going to be drawing some text here. So uh, we want to call our fonts global. And let's go ahead and select our Georgia 16 font there. Because for a title screen, we want it to be kind of big. We are going to be using some scaling, so I'll kind of get in a little bit to uh, what I'd talked about before on the, you know, the, the edge smoothing and point clamps and stuff like that. So uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to just call this Adventures in XNA. Actually, I just want adventures in for this top part. And uh, I'm going to select create a new vector to draw it to. So I'm going to say new vector 2. And I want it to draw this just 10 to the right and 10 down from the top. And. <clears throat> Next up, we need to give it a color, so I'm going to say new color, <coughs> excuse me, 230 by 215 by 184. And the rotation, I'm going to leave it zero. And a new vector for the origin is just going to be 0, 0. Oops, not a new nothing, a new vector 2. Sorry about that. And um, for the scale, I'm going to scale it up a bit. So I'm going to say 2.4 for the scale. And uh, let's see here, sprite effect, I really don't want, so I'm just going to say sprite effect none. And finally, the layer depth is just going to be zero. All right, 
so let's just take a quick look at that and as you can see we have uh, our text is drawing properly and it's kind of fuzzy around the edges we'll get into that in a little bit how to sharpen sharpen it up and make it look a little more Nintendo-y so what I'm going to do is close out of there and I'm going to <clears throat> just gonna copy this so we can even though we're not going to use all these parameters for the next ones I'm going to just take that down and uh, well, actually we will will use the parameters but for the colors uh, on this text it's going to be a little bit different um, instead of using these static color values what we'll do is we'll use our color cycling variables that we created so RGB just delete those values and let's see what else do we want to change here this is going to say X and A exclamation point <clears throat> and we don't want to draw it to the same location as our header so Let's go ahead and drop this down to 131 pixels, or, or I'm sorry, bring that in from the left 131 pixels, and then 98 down. And we're going to leave the rotation at zero. Origin vector will stay at zero. The scaling, um, we're going to bump this up dramatically. We want X and A to be in the large print. So I'm going to say 5 there. And we can leave the rest uh, sprite effects. None and 0. So let's go ahead and just see what that looks like real quick. And there you have it. Nice flashy graphic. Um, so now uh, we'll add another layer to that. Offset it just a little bit and then we'll add sort of a uh, overlay to that to make it kind of stand out more.